in this video, we are going to focus on data. This is the perfect start for our Build 101 series, as everything in search starts from there. To put it simply, your search can only be as good as your data. That means that you generally can't simply dump your database to Algolia and expect the best outcome. There's a little work to be done beforehand, and as we'll see, it's fairly straightforward once you know what's needed and why. Let's dig in and format that data. Oracle, MySQL, Redis, MongoDB. Chances are you've heard at least one of these names before. Most modern applications and websites rely on these database solutions. They all have their pros and cons, but one thing to understand is that search works differently than databases. Databases are built for exhaustivity. With DBs, you want all the data matching a given query, no matter the time the query might take to process, or the volume that might be returned. Whereas for search, you only need the few tens of most relevant records in a matter of milliseconds so that it feels instantaneous to the user. These two different designs call for different approaches regarding formatting the data. The term format we use here can actually mean two things. It refers to the specification your data must follow for the engine to be able to process it and make it searchable. It's also the action of shaping that data to optimize it for search. This requires a thoughtful analysis of how your data can best be leveraged by the engine, but it's a big part of what will make the difference between a good search and a great search. The first one is simple. Non-properly formatted data will not be indexed and will return an error. The second, about optimizing data for search, requires a meticulous approach. Let's cover the accepted format first. Algolia is schemaless, meaning that we don't expect your data to follow a specific model to work with us. Our engine is optimized for semi-structured data and more specifically accepts and transmits data exclusively in the JSON format. JSON has become a standard on the web today, it is easily readable by humans and easy to manipulate with code. Here is a quick overview of valid data types. Strings, numbers, boolean, nested objects, and arrays. One commonly used data type that is not natively accepted is date. To work with dates efficiently within Algolia, you should convert them to Unix timestamps. This will allow ordering records by those dates in ascending or descending order as easily as numbers. Let's put that all together in a dummy record to see how it would look like. Now that we've seen what format is accepted by the engine, let's see how to optimize for search and what makes up for a good record in your index. On many regards, when optimizing data for search, less is more is a good motto. The main thing to keep in mind is that records in your algorithm index must only hold data that will be useful for the search experience. This doesn't exclusively mean directly searchable data, but rather everything that will be used by your users during the search process. In the end, a good way to proceed is to start with the end user experience you want to provide. What the user should be able to search for? What should be displayed as a result? What attribute makes sense to filter on, etc. We generally identify four categories. Searchable attributes, filtering attributes, display attributes, and business metrics attributes. Let's see them in more details one by one using this record as a reference. Searchable attributes. This is by far the most important element and the one you should really spend some time carefully selecting and ordering. We will cover them in more details in the next video for the configuring textual relevance step. For now, the important point is to understand that the searchable attributes are the attribute the engine will look into to find textual matches for a given search query. The simplest record we could have in an algorithm index should at least hold one searchable attribute. In our example, title, actors, genre, and description are the only attributes we want to search into. Filtering attributes. 
These are the attributes used to display only a subset of results matching a given filter value. It can help users refine their queries and provide a powerful browsing experience, letting them explore content without even typing a word. Filters can also be used to power navigation on your website, such as category pages. Those attributes can either be strings or numeric values. In our example, year, actors, genre, rating are great options to refine queries. Typical other examples could be categories, keywords, price, or date range. Display attributes. These attributes will be used to display results on the front end and make the results more interesting or appealing to the user's eyes, like displaying an image to illustrate each result. In our example, this would be the image attribute. Business metrics attribute. This kind of attribute is crucial to provide a good relevance from the get-go, especially for as-you-type search experiences. This will allow the best results to come on top of the result set, even for empty queries or queries with only a couple of characters. For very specific queries, this is what will enable the engine to promote the best records according to your business data when multiple results of equal textual relevance are found. In our example, this would be the score attribute. Searchable, filtering, display, and business, these are the four types of attributes that can be leveraged to build your search. Some attributes can fall into multiple categories. Actors, or genre, can be searchable but also used as filters. The star rating could be used as a filter but also as a custom ranking. To conclude this part on attributes, there is actually one more that we need to cover, the object ID. It is a bit of an outsider because it is not related to the search experience in any ways. The object ID is simply the record's unique identifier. It is very useful when you need to update or delete a specific record, for instance. It can be mapped to the ID of a record in your DB, but if you don't provide any, Algolia will generate one for you automatically. A final note on record size. This one might be easy to overlook, but record size is actually important to consider. Here again, less is more. In essence, your records should be kept as small as possible for the following reasons. More searchable textual content increases the potential noise in matches. Indexing is faster with lighter records. Search results will come back faster as well. That's why for great search performance, we generally advise record size around 2 kilobyte on average. In this video, we've covered the data format accepted by Algolia and we've detailed the four main types of attributes. Now that we've seen how data should look like for optimal search performance, in the next video, we will take care of actually pushing some of that data into our Algolia index.